was is the best. Well, I'm not backing down, it's the Bentley. I'm not backing down, it is this Nissan. James, sorry, mate, you are just wrong. The Nissan GT, it has a whiff of the Nürburgring. No, it's not just a whiff of the Nürburgring, it reeks of it. Your clothes will <laughs> smell of it six weeks after you've been in it. It's better than it smelling of Ryan Giggs' bathwater. Mate, <laughs> it's a Bentley. Think what that means. I'll tell you what it means, Hammond. It means it is £66,000 more expensive than this. Yes, because that's a Nissan. That's a Bentley. Yeah, exactly. It's a Nissan. And when you strip everything off this Nissan, you find underneath a racing car. When you strip all the stuff off of that Bentley, underneath it is a VW. <laughs> if we strip all of the stuff off you, we'd find underneath the same basic skeleton as you would find in a racing driver. But when we put it all back on as we must to make you James May, you're James May! That's the wrong <laughs> car! Yes, but Hammond, if we stripped everything off of you, we'd find the same skeleton that you have in a racing driver when he was a little boy. But when you put it all back together, <laughs> you are still Richard Hammond. You in that GTR is like you in those shoes. Ridiculous! <laughs> Says the man in the jacket woven out of 100% pure 1935. <laughs> that was designed very specifically for a purpose, to feel good on the ragged edge of performance. You're not going to do that. You have a watch that can go to the moon. You're never going to go to the moon. They don't make moon boots in your size, but you like having that watch. <laughs> because it means it is a good watch, and it's the same with the car. You're just being... a <laughs> Thank you. And you've got a <laughs> like a... <laughs> baby one. Gentlemen, I... gentlemen, gentlemen. Hey, 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 listen. Do you want an Audi A4, OK, that's much more expensive and harder to park. Yes, I do. Good news. <laughs> because this week, OK, we've received news that there's a new Audi A8, OK? It's designed by a man called uh, Mick Dick. <laughs> uh, and I've got... Uh, I've got... No, no, no. I've got the bump here, OK? Um... Is there anything interesting to tell us about it? <laughs> Such a nice sound, won't you? There's a bat lift on it. No. <laughs> well, what does it look like? No idea. This is the picture they sent, OK? <laughs> it's, it's under a cloth. Yes. And who's he? That's Mick Dick. Oh, that's him? Yeah. <laughs> Best friends, as it turns out, of uh, Billy Willy. <laughs> <laughs> no, they work, they work for Bob Knob, do they? <laughs> With Roger Todger. <laughs> They were going to get it designed by the Scottish car designer, uh, Jock Cock. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was something interesting in here, OK? There was, genuinely, right? Because what Audi has done is they've outlined what the A8 customer is, and they say... He's highly affluent, uh, with uh, an average income of $500,000 a year. Uh, he's 58 years old, uh, highly educated, uh, mostly married. <laughs> mostly married? How, what is that? What, so he's sort of married, I don't know, down to there? And then this bit is separate. <laughs> yeah, it says he's got a few children still in the household. What, in the basement? Yeah, he's a kidnapper, is what I'm saying. There's anyone here who is 58 years old on half a million dollars a year with divorced shins and some children in the basement? <laughs> oh, dear, Mick Dick's cocked up. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's built there. a car. For someone who doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think the problem in this car was with the picture they sent us this one, which is when the car came out a few years ago. Nobody wanted to drive around with a small girl's severed head stuck on the front. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing about this was is that when it came out, is we all got suckered into it and thought, yeah, she's three in the front, three in the back, it makes sense, but it doesn't. If you think, I mean, I've got what, two daughters, so if I have one in the front between me and my wife, that leaves one girl in the back all on her own. So you're just going to have a massive argument every time you go near them. Exactly. That is the it's big... It's not going to work. That's actually, that's not the worst bit about those, those six-seater cars, because it could be worse if you had your wife in the front and both daughters and you sat in the back. Oh. No, but you do see that occasionally. You see the mother in the front, and then, and then there's a bloke sitting in the back seat. It's tragic. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the most pitiable oh, sight God, you can see. <laughs> She's effectively saying, you've given me the baby, now get in the back. Yeah.
Every time Alpha say how much it weighs, they give a different figure. Yeah, that's because they bought better things to do than go around weighing cars. When Picasso had finished one of his paintings, he didn't say, oh, I wonder how much that weighs. Yeah, but you need to know the weight of an Alpha for when you resell it, because you buy scrap cars by weight. <laughs> um, no, the reason I brought this car up is their chief design director. His name is Samuel Chuffart. Give over. <laughs> it's not... His name is I not Chuffart. I promise Chuff you... It's not... Chuff fart. Lovely. There's a man with fond memories of his school days. <laughs> <laughs> Every register, oh no, it's got to Christian, I'm next. Chuff fart. <laughs> I bet the novelty never wore off for him. No, he, apparently he, he worked at Jaguar for a while, not sure what happened there. I think they probably had to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's ended up in Italy, because that is an Italian firm. They're actually making the, the car in China. Can you imagine what the wiring's going to be like? <laughs> Chuff fart in Italian probably means hat penis anyway. Or something like that. <laughs> we actually asked our researchers to call up this company and say, yeah, can you tell us more about the car? And not one of them could get through the beginning bit of the phone call without <laughs> bursting. You put the receptionist on the other end, must be used to it, the phone ringing, and there's someone laughing, yeah, I'll put you through. <laughs> uh, chuff fart. He probably just answers the phone with the words, yes, that is my name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's clear the air on the <laughs> <laughs> That's how that picture came about. Someone lit a match just after Chuff <laughs> Jeremy, didn't you recently call bus drivers Nazis? No. No, you did, you did. You recently... You... I didn't. You did? I didn't. I said that they were little Hitlers and murderers. Oh, right. <laughs> Either way, fact is, they're quite cross, and more specifically, their union leader is furious with you personally. And he's gone on record as saying that you should spend a week working as a bus driver under their working conditions for their pay. Yeah. Well, think about it. What's he done there? What he's saying is that bus drivers' working conditions and pay are dreadful. And he's their union leader. Well, who's responsible for that? <laughs> Him! Yeah. Basically, he ran to one end of the pitch, kicked it to the back of the net and went, yeah, I recognise that goalie, it's mine. I've yeah. got it, I've got it. <laughs> what an idiot. He is. But you've driven a bus, haven't you? Yes, lots. Lots How of bus drivers. How hard is it? Easiest thing I've ever done. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Is it as easy as sitting here? Yeah. It's easier, actually, because you're not being filmed. So you can have a joint. No, sorry. <laughs> right. Is, um... <laughs> no, it is very easy. There you are, you see. No need to be a murderer. Hmm. Now, look, there's, um, I've got news from Renault. They've got a new car. I've got a picture of it here. It's called the Influenza. This and isn't it, called, uh, it isn't called the Influenza. It's called something a bit like that. Uh, it's electric, as you can see, because there it is, plugged in, recharging. And I was wondering... When, in the future, when we're all driving electric cars, as they tell us we will, the cities are full of these charging points, hmm. won't ten-year-old boys just go around unplugging cars? Because that's what we would have done when I was ten. <laughs> well, not until well, then. Do you have to be ten? Why wouldn't you do that age, I don't know, 52? Well, why? <laughs> you would, though, wouldn't you? If you saw somebody pie a chug like, you would just go, I just... You would. I would. Why? It's the same as you, you remember the, you remember the early Fiat Panda, yeah, the, the boxy one that Shisharo designed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever I walked past one of those with a group of friends, he always picked it up and turned it round. So people would. Yes. <laughs> and you, you could just kiss it ever since. I was going, no, how does that happen? In the same way that it's, it's always great fun to lock someone else's bicycle up with your bicycle lock. You're oh. just a yobbo! <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a great game. I mean, you've done, you must, must have just throw a brick through their window no, or set fire to their shop. How big is that often? You buy a whole lot of really, really cheap bicycle locks. It's a combination one. Yeah, and then just go along the street locking people's bikes up. Why would you do that? Because, because, because it's funny. No, but, you do, <laughs> no, but it is because you do it. And then I did this with Robert Cook on York Station in 1978. If it was your bicycle, you'd know it was us. But you, you lock it up and then you hide behind some wheelie bins and wait for them to come back because they take their own lock off going, oh, yes, my bicycle's good, and they run off and go, dunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't put that on there. People are watching. They're getting the idea. Yeah, but, no, but don't do this, children, 10-year-olds and 52-year-olds, if you're watching. We're not condoning well, 52 -year -old locking children other people's either. bicycles up. No, no. Or, indeed, have... unplugging people's electric car because when they come back and find the range just says, two, it's not funny. <laughs> 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 We're not saying you should do that. No, you shouldn't. We're just saying you can do it. <laughs> so let's... Borderline overdone underneath, but it's all right. If you film it from the correct side, nobody need know. It smells amazing. <laughs> They're not burnt. <laughs> so, uh...
It's not burned, it's just well done. <laughs> the only problem is that in one of those you couldn't enjoy a chocolate magnum ice cream. It's all right, I don't eat ice cream. I think it's something to do with being straight. <laughs> what? What? Are you applauding him? What's that? What do you mean? Are you saying everyone who likes ice cream? Well, I mean, so ice, ice cream is a bit, you know. You're saying all children are homosexual. No, <laughs> but I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But a grown man eating an ice cream, it's you know, it's a bit, it's that, it's that way rather than that way. It just, <laughs> it is. Welcome to the inside of Richard Hammond's head. I'm right. I can't believe you is... can't see that. It's a fact. It's easy. It's in front of you. you. And this, of course, is the sort of room you get. Okay. There's usually tea and coffee making facilities. Uh, so you uh, you check there's some water in the kettle, uh, plug it in, and have a brew. OK? But how do you know it was water? Hmm? <laughs> how do you know a previous guest didn't pee in it? <laughs> I always do. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Last thing you do before checking out, you set the alarm for 3.50 in the morning, <laughs> kip her in the trouser press and then pee in the kettle. <laughs> so the tea's out, and so I'm afraid is the TV. And there we are, there's BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel Four, and Channel Five. <laughs> He's still at it! <laughs> then, of course, there's the jet engine uh, in your bathroom. It's actually the fan which comes on when you turn on the light. Ready? <laughs> but when you turn the light off, it stays on until dawn, or until you go next door and hit it with a hammer. <laughs> the only place in a hotel like this where you can get some peace and quiet is in the dining room. This is because, on average, 78% of people in provincial hotel dining rooms are dead. <laughs> It might be tempting to go there to get away from the noise, but don't. You see, this is the sort of place where they still think fruit juice is a starter. <laughs> so, what do you do to while away the time? <laughs> well, let's be honest, shall we, OK? You're a man, you're alone, you're in a room. How long's it going to take? <laughs> Well, don't. It's dangerous. These sheets are nylon, right? Which means that after a few minutes, you'll be a pulsating mass of static electricity. <laughs> and nylon makes you sweat, so you'll be all wet. You're a time bomb. Okay? <laughs> you put one foot on the Acrylan carpet and poof! OK, this amateur footage was taken just ten minutes after sales rep Colin Welbeck checked into his room at the polished Bishop Hotel in Helmel Hempstead. <laughs> let's, let's just see what happens, OK? <laughs> but, but, I think there is a problem with this car. Because they've called it the Growler. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, we, we... We googled Growler, <laughs> and we were quite surprised and a bit shocked by what it turns out to mean. And you know, Richard, I've just forgotten what it is. What does it mean? Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen? Well, you know those big welcome mats you might see on a girl in the 70s? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> That. Why would you name your car after that? Do you, honestly, James, I don't think they knew. I think they're sitting now in Zurich or wherever they are. Uh, th this is the first time they've realised that Growler means that yeah. in England. And they'll be sitting going, Gott in Himmel! <laughs> Sometimes we have accidentally named the car after I'm Fraugarten! <laughs> well, the car, the Growler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Isn't them. Um, Based on the next case, you got four seats. No, you can't get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's turned over to time, boys. What? What? I'm not. Uh...
I'm not sure they're going to sell very many of those. No, I, no, neither do I. And there's another reason why. It costs £670,000. <laughs> yeah. There probably will be a trimmed down version later, but I'll bet you. <laughs> Just for the Brazilian market. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's called the Growler. <laughs> Where have you got an automatic? I bust my arm. That's why it took a long time to get out. You've Which really arm? broken your arm. Which yes. arm have you broken? <laughs> <laughs> we're close to the equator. We're very close to it. Perhaps we're on it. No, we can't be. We'd see it. A big dotted line. Oh, they are. Oh, bad news. What? The Dacia Sandero. It's delayed. Oh, no. Anyway, last week... <laughs> It's time for a question. And the question is, where is the best driving road in the world? Something that has everything. The challenging bends, no traffic, the great views, the long, fast straights, the lot. Yeah. Uh, now, it's unlikely to be here because uh, everyone does five. It's not going to be here because everyone's on drugs. That's all just full of ox. Uh, Al Gore says that's gone, so it's not going to be down there. That's full of spiders. Signposts here are all full of gibberish. They're all communists. Can't yep. go there because the Americans will shoot you. No! Yes. no what? Thank you. He's quite a sweet fellow, really. I think I'll call him Bob. Moments later, Bob is dismembered by the staff of Narita San's restaurant and readied for the deep fryer. Again, amazing. Mm. It won't be. Because we're not clearing a minefield, we're knocking houses down. You wait till you see what happens to a house when it is presented with this moving at 400 RPM. Well, if What's the house immediately explodes, you'll be OK, but that's about it. Right. That's, that's what it does. It just goes around doing this. It's like a mechanical <laughs> cat. It's a military machine with some white paint on it. It isn't military. It's for clearance and saving lives. Princess Diana had one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what I'm mad about. I'm mad as hell about Detroit. Because in 1960, that was the richest city in America. The richest. And now it is the poorest. And no other city anywhere in the world has collapsed that quickly. What about Hiroshima? <laughs> yeah, apart from Hiroshima. Pompeii. Yes, apart from Hiroshima and Pompeii, no city has collapsed as fast as Detroit has. It's unbelievable. Mm. But let's not forget, shall we, you modified your Corolla by driving it into a Volvo. Uh, yeah, I did do that. <laughs> I did do that. It was my first crash. The first of many. Yes, all right, yes. <laughs> rather set the trend for your life, yes, didn't it? Yes, I got the hang of it. Yeah. Yes, oh, all right. crashing. Yes. I'm going to make okay. a living out of this. Oh, there I go again. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. That's it. That sort of thing that's really it. annoys me. We should do a car that's quintessentially German. Well, just replace the spoons with little sausages. No, no. <laughs> Give it trafficators that go like that. <laughs> <laughs> a sat nav that only goes to Poland. Oh! <laughs> I'm fine. The fan belts have been lost for thousands of years. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, Christ Almighty. Hello, horse. I shall call you Tesco. I, I strayed slightly strayed. over the speed limit there, and I was caught, and they dealt with me efficiently and courteously, as befits a civilised nation, which is, of course, what France is. No. France is a country you have to drive through to get to Italy. That's all it's for. <laughs> It's, look, the no. fact of the matter is, they've got better cheese, they've got better wine, no, they they've got better... They, have. Got they better... haven't got better cheese. They are a bunch of treacherous, lamb-burning, workshy peasants. <laughs> All right. Look, have you seen this? Have you seen this bridge? What country is that in? Is it in Britain or is it in France? It's in France. It was Thank designed you. by an Englishman, but we're so tight-fisted we wouldn't build it here, exactly and they would. Right. No, no, no. They're it's better rubbish. than us. No, they're rude. Look, so they're better you, than us. No, I promised the policeman rude. I'd say that. They're rude. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have taken my licence away and put me in the Bastille. Now, Let's yes, do that. the news, ladies and gentlemen. Now, last week you saw Richard Hammond driving a six-wheeled Mercedes-Benz, but did you know they made another six-wheeled car long before that one? Would you like to see a picture of it? Love to. Here it is. Oh right. <laughs> Did they not mention this, then? Do you know they didn't? How old? It is, isn't it? Because Mercedes like to go on about their heritage and history, and they didn't mention that one. Well, perhaps they didn't mention it because it's got Hitler in it. I don't know. <laughs> That's not Hitler. It is. It isn't. No, that car was built long before 
indicators were invented, so he's just there to do some hand signals. Yeah. What <laughs> signals are you doing there, then, James? He's saying, take the Third Reich. <laughs> Ow! Try the chicken. <laughs> You should moisturise. No, it's what? You, just you should moisturise. In the moisturise. Moisturise. It's because your skin's flaky. Because you're dry. Head. You look like something found in a pyramid. Anyway, listen. We must turn our attention. <laughs> Let's, <laughs> Let's have a look at the sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting that in the British Museum. <laughs> you can't okay. buy that because it's a sayat. Well, what's wrong with that? It's Spanish. Uh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I'm bored with Spain at the moment. Fernando Alonso in Formula One, he's the most successful driver there. But he just is, OK? Then you've got Nadal in tennis. They've won the UA for championships. They've nicked our airports. They've nicked all our fish. They've nicked all our building societies. They eat the heads off prawns. They throw donkeys <laughs> off tower blocks. And they stab cows. <laughs> so that's the Spanish. That is the Spanish. <laughs> Anybody from Spain here? Sorry. Give me my fish back. <laughs> Great news. What? The days... <laughs> they know what it is. <laughs> the Dacia Sandero has gone on sale in left-hand drive market. Nice. Now, because this is a hard job, and I'm not just saying this to win favour with lorry drivers, it's a hard job. Change gear, change gear, change gear, check your mirrors, murder a prostitute, change gear, change gear, murder, check your... That's a lot of effort in a day. The worst thing about Hot Wheels was when you get up in the night for a pee and you tread on one. <laughs> or Lego. Lego is... Or an upturned plug. No. Lego's worse. Why? Because an upturned plug is big, Lego hides in the carpet. <laughs> is there the anything same. worse than an upturned plug for treading on in the middle of the night? Yeah, Lego. A landmine. <laughs> a tiger. Your house, James. <laughs> I know something worse. Dog, dog. <laughs> <laughs> that is a two words right out of my mouth. It's the ow. <laughs> it's that, really, if you have a lot of dogs, moment. it can happen. It's not a <laughs> it, it is. You have horses in your house. I did on occasion. Yes, it has happened. Have you ever trodden in some horse manure? Possibly, unbeknownst to me, I just had a warm foot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want a full-size model of a toy car. It's basically a Camaro with Hot Wheels written on it. It's £40,000. Yeah, but it will be worth more if you keep it in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in PC World... I didn't mean Jeremy's car was rubbish because it's a midget. I just meant that's what it is. It's, a, it's a, an MG midget. It, I'm sorry. Children, if you're watching, um... School tomorrow, if you've got a science lesson and the teacher says, today we're going to do storage of hydrogen, pay attention, because whoever works that out is going to be the richest person the world has ever seen. Ever. Because, honestly, when, as soon as they get the infrastructure worked out, that's just it. Yep. So if you're watching this in Saudi Arabia... <laughs> <laughs> Time to break out your camel. <laughs> it's back to carpets for you. <laughs> Where the hell are we? We were in the Atacama Desert, where there is no life at all, not even on a cellular level. Richard Hammond was the smallest living organism for miles. There was nothing here at all. I, I tell you. Seriously? I can, I can get in the back of this. Just I want to see this. it. Do you want me to do the seat fit? Yeah, there is an okay. art to getting in, OK? You are joking. To do it in a crazy and sexy way. Yeah, you're looking fantastic. Oh, you see, look, I'm in. <laughs> I can't believe that. Right, I'm getting in. Do you Jeremy, see? This is, <laughs> this is a country where homosexual marriage is legal. And yeah. he's, <laughs> he is my partner and also my lover. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your foot. Look at that. That's marvellous. Chaps, did you know mine only comes with one seat as standard? Really? What? As standard, you get one seat in a demon. You can opt to have the others put back in and it costs you a dollar. Which seat do they put in as standard? <laughs> <laughs> got to get out of Berlin. OK. What's that? I don't know. It wasn't there this morning. You don't think it fell out of James's luggage, do you? <laughs>
fell out of my what? I, I missed that. <laughs> You get those people go, I like a hard bed, it's good for your spine. It isn't. I, I hate hard I do beds. Like, I do like a hard bed, actually. No, I'm sorry, Richard. Can anyone think of one thing in the world which is better hard than soft? <laughs> well, that's, that's quite awkward, actually, there, gentlemen. <laughs> what? Ice. <laughs> Well, actually, we'll do the news in a minute, because first I want to say a couple more things about that Bentley. You see, you said there it was like a slab of old England. Yes. But Bentley is owned by VW. Yeah. That car was styled by a Belgian, and it was engineered by a man called Ulrich Eichhorn. <laughs> Doesn't sound very British. Are you Does presenting it? Top Gear, or are you writing a letter to the Daily Telegraph? Well, I'm just saying that you know immediately that that car is German, because it's got too much power. They've overdone it, as usual like they did on their French holiday in 1939. James... <laughs> James, the Queen is German. But yes. you don't say Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Alice every time she comes on the television, do you? Well, I do, actually. Yeah, he yes. does. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know that new law about kids under four foot five? They have to use a booster seat in the car. He does. Yes, all right. <laughs> all right. People under four foot five have to use a booster seat in the car. Yeah. Well, in North Yorkshire, the police say they cannot enforce that law. Do you know why? They do not have the... <laughs> <laughs> they do not have the legal... <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this now. The legal... <laughs> because they do not have the legal right to me measure children. <laughs> <laughs> to just measure them. Just say, if you see a policeman measuring your children, you think, quick, call the... <laughs> <laughs> So they'll have to do what they usually do then and just put up some new sort of camera by the road to monitor children in no, cars to make no, sure they're... No, 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 you can't video children. Have you ever been to a school sports day? You have to ask every parent there before you're allowed to take the camera out of the boot. Or go to your own kids' sports day. Maybe they'll <laughs> let them... <laughs> the, but this is the thing that we don't really understand about Germany. Once something becomes a rule, it is a rule. In fact, I once had this, I once had a very interesting conversation with two friends of mine. One is from California and one is from Germany. And we were talking about losing your driving license. And the Californian said, in Germany, what would happen if you lost your license and then you, you know, drove your car? And the German said, no, you cannot do this. <laughs> and he says, yeah, I know, but what if, you know, I know you're not supposed to, but what if you, what if you did? He says, no, uh, you cannot drive, you have no license. <laughs> And the Californian went, yeah, man, but, you know, late one night, you just, hell, you go for a drive. And the general went, it is impossible to drive without a licence! <laughs> impossible! Impossible! They were out and about the other day catching people speeding on the river. No. What? <laughs> well, the speed limit, we were told, is 7.4 kilometres an hour. What's that, four and a... Four and a half. That's walking pace. I could swim faster than that. <laughs> They're going to be prosecuting poo sticks. That's <laughs> speeding. Yeah. It's this obsession everybody's got now that speed kills. It doesn't. Speed has never killed anyone. Suddenly becoming stationary. That's what gets you. <laughs> that's the killer. That will do it. Yeah. Over now to Richard Hammond in the science corner. Thank you, Jeremy. Now, this is really quite simple. OK, understeer works like this. You drive down the road, you turn the wheel, but the car goes straight on, crashes into a tree, and you die. <laughs> Oversteer works like this. You drive down the same bit of road, turn the wheel, but the back of the car comes round like this, and you go off the road, crash into a tree, and you die. Now, oversteer is best because you don't see the tree that kills you. <laughs> many, many cyclists here. the way young people are approving of my car and my stickers. Dabber it, wagwam! I speak the language of the millennial. Hammond and May won't be able to do that because they're in a Ford and uh, Toyota. They're bad whips. Worried by the progress of our rivals, Hammond and I stopped to discuss our colleague. I mean, look at him. He's pretty pointless. So that is a bit of a, bit of a rise in the terrain there. No. Do we, in these unique circumstances, merely leave him mm -hmm. or shoot him and leave him? Because we were working as a team, we decided to just leave him. I, I feel bad. I do. I feel bad. I'm getting better. <laughs>
and Richard forgets the abbreviation for America. USB. Hammond. Yes. This is an SS-18, nicknamed the Satan. It was targeted Ross on Y. Was it? That's what that says. Oh, no, hang on a minute, though. It says alternative target, Chipsky Norton, there. <laughs> Chipsky <laughs> Norton. <laughs> I think it must be damp. <laughs> it was time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> you opened the door one. I opened my door. <laughs> the door's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's come back to Longbridge. <laughs> it's on strike. I've received a letter. <clears throat> May I just read it to you, dear Mr Clarkson? You're going to love this. I'm writing to you on behalf of the world-famous Madame Tussauds. Oh, oh they're God. not going to... Yes, they are. Are you joking? Yes, oh, they are. Oh, no, why... They say they, I have been highly requested, highly requested, to be immortalised in wax. <laughs> Are you sure that doesn't say immersed in wax? <laughs> no, immortalised in wax. How are they going to immortalise you in wax? Where are they going to get all the wax? <laughs> Presumably they're going to have to melt down everything else in Madame Tussauds to make one massive, hideous wax dummy <laughs> of a hideous dummy. Then it's easy. They just get a very big candle, they light it, let it drip down the edges for a couple of hours, and then just draw a face on it with a felt tip. <laughs> that would look a bit like it. And what are they going to do with it when they've got it? Imagine children. We go to Madame Tussauds, we go to... What is it? Ah! <laughs> it's going to be the, the first waxworks in history to be sculpted with a pickaxe. Yes, and a hammer. Yeah. I want to see them sculpting it, because imagine once they've melted down enough wax, which is a lot, the size of the urn, it'll look like a scene from Lord of the Rings, with all these little orcs moving around the bottom, they're getting ready for big paw to create this hideous, hideous, grotesque, enormous thing. How are they going to fit it in? No, don't put it there. Put it in the Natural History Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Better still, <laughs> next to the big bronze door. <laughs> Just a big skeleton. Just a big skeleton next to the brontosaur. Big Tyrannosaurus. What the hell is that? <laughs> and then people can go and watch. Ladies and gentlemen, the sound of bitterness and jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> my colleagues, though, I wish I hadn't brought that up. Um... And that's why it's blindingly difficult to operate everything in here. As we shall now demonstrate, chaps, give me a straightforward task. I'll give you task. a task, okay. okay? Adjust the clock. Okay. <laughs> While James is doing that, Hammond and I have noticed that we've got these straps here. Now, these are fitted for you to be handcuffed to when you yeah, own the there. owner of the car. <laughs> Don't take ah. it to the warehouse! I can't find the money! <laughs> I'm going, please! Just please. tell me where my children are! Ah, ah, ah! Set time and date. Go on, then. Right, right. M manual? Semi-automatic? Oh, these are the weapons. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm quite good at this sort of thing, but that's rubbish. <laughs> Obviously, the big news at the moment are fuel prices. And uh, if I could just be serious for a moment, the problem we've got is, yes, the government could bring the tax down and therefore cut the cost, that would be very popular, but that we think that the overall trend must from now on be up because getting oil out of the ground is becoming more and more complicated. They have to get it out of sand in Canada and so on. And so prices have to keep increasing. And what worries me most of all is that We've always thought, well, by the time petrol becomes so expensive we can't afford it anymore, science will have come up with a solution. And I don't think science has. No, and I think at the moment we're all imagining that we're just about to see a whole new generation of electric cars that will solve it. But mm. the fact is, from everything we've seen, from our experience thus far, the electric car isn't ready. They don't no. kind of work in the real world yet. No, no I mean, how long would it true. take you, for example, to get from here to your house well, in an range, electric car? Because of the range, I'd have to stop halfway and recharge it. It's two days to get home. <laughs> so it's, 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 I'll just pop home and get something. That's a four day... Two to... days to come back. We can't use public transport because aeroplanes are grounded by a volcanic burp near the Arctic Circle. Trains don't work in the autumn or on a Tuesday. <laughs> Buses are full of murderers. Um, <laughs> really, the car is the only solution. For now, yeah. And now it's getting to the point where nobody can really afford to fill them up with fuel. To be brutally honest, the only real solution to keeping fuel prices down is population control. What, uh, what we need for China? No, not <laughs> James May's fuel price solution. <laughs> not kill no. people. Well, fair enough. Think Did... about it. How many people are there in France? In France, yeah. it's about the same as here. 60 about million. Sixty million. We don't 
certainly in all of them, surely. I'm not talking about a pogrom. I'm talking oh, about sorry. limiting the rate at which the population expands. Oh, no, it's even... So you're saying that because I've got three children, I'm causing fuel prices to go up. <laughs> and because you... You spill your seed alone. <laughs> <laughs> 